Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and uh, I'm tying the hairy fodder uh, It's a bass fly but it works very well for carp if you're um, fishing somewhere with larger predatory carp like maybe the Great Lakes or something like that um, You can tie them in a range of sizes I'm tying a size 4 but I would say from a 6 to a one or is possible realistically um, Depending on depending on what you're where you're fishing. So this is a size four B, Gamakatsu B10S, and I'm just going to run on a bed of 140 denier uh, Danville's Flymaster. But any any thread will do. Uh, I'm tying a different colour from the one that was in the vice. Now I'm switching to a a dark one, not a black, and, but I'm using some red flash. Any again, any flash. It's up. You just change the colours to suit yourself. You could tie them dark colours with a bit of pearl. It'll sort of represent like a bullhead or something. Olives and orange, crayfish. So I've got a couple of strands, I've just doubled over and doubled them again. I'm just going to pull the tips so they're slightly uneven. Catch them in on top. Fold them back. I'll leave them, just leave them that length there. That's the longest fibres are like two, two and a bit shanks. Shanks and the shorter ones are obviously coming in trimmed. Now, the rest of the tail is uh, rubber legs. Uh, I like about 10 strands coming off the back, so you need five. need five lengths, right? Maybe six. Depending on the, depending on the size of fly you're tying. For a four, I think, I think uh, ten is just about right. So I've got these rubber legs. I'm just going to measure them up. Take a loose wrap. I'm just going to Wind back, securing them in. Fold, fold the ends back. And cover them up. Tidy all that up, that's nice and secure. So the legs can't pull out, they've got to break. And again, don't, I don't want the legs to be too even. Something like that's fine. And you can you can trim them back on the water if you feel you need to. Eyes. I'm just using a black heavy lead eye. Um, but again, it's up to you. It's up to you. Use the use the size and weight of eye. That suits where you're fishing. I mean, it's quite a it's quite a bulky fly, so it's got to be like a dumbbell of some description, brass or lead, some size. Bead chain would be a bit too light. Get that tied in nice and tight. And then, as usual. Put a super glue just to lock it all in place and hold it. And I just run it back across the whole thread base just for a bit of extra durability in the fly. 
you know, wind over it a couple of times. So I'm going to get some zonka, which is just the rest of the fly, and I, I tend to tie these two tone, um, but you don't have to. You can just use a single strip, single single piece if you like. So the back half I'm going to use purple. Um, Purple, black and purple is a great colour combination for a lot of species. Uh, certainly works for bass and carp, so it's worth tying them in this colour to get in your box. Just get that tied in at the back there. And then this is just standard zonka, it's not cross cut. You can use cross cut if you like. Just sweep that back as you wrap, keep the wraps nice and tight, slightly overlap and when you get to about a third to halfway you can just come across your thread, lock it in, a couple of turns is plenty to hold that, trim away the waist and sweep everything back and lash it down nice and secure And you can moisten it just to sort of keep everything out of the way. The front portion I'm using black zonka. And it's just the same again. Offer it in, catch the hide in, and I like to take this right up to the right up to the back of the dumbbell eyes. Same again. I like to I like to slightly overlap the hide, just to build a slightly denser. Uh, Denser body. Just at this, I like to kind of uh, get the thread. Try to avoid catching too many hairs at the front, just for a neater, just for a neater finish. Again, two wraps will hold it. Turn the hand tight there. Tidy that up. You can, if you wish, fill this area with a bit of dubbing, but it, it doesn't really matter. The last thing to do is just to add a weed guard. Uh, just got to get some hard nylon, inch and a half or two inches. Loop it over, take a couple of wraps in this direction in front of it, push the loop forward, take a couple of wraps behind, and then you can just pull it through, tidy it up. Might take a bit of cajoling. As this one is, what we'll just do is I'll just take a, a, a gathering wrap, a thread or two around only the nylon, pull it up, and then I'll do the same in the opposite side. Back the way, 
and that will force it to be splayed and then you can lock it in place finish behind it's easier to go around the the weed guard. Oops I bumped my camera. There we go. Always two, these are getting bashed about the bottom. So that way you waste. And a wee tip for you is if you wet Zonka, the rabbit, you don't, it won't soak up any head cement or anything, um, which can be up, you know, it could ruin your fly. So I'll just come in here with some more super glue, and I don't need to worry too much about it soaking into the, the rabbit because it's nice and wet already. Same on the other underside. That will walk with the top of the fly. And then I can come in, trim my weed guard. And that's it. The hairy fodder. It's a really good fly. Smallies like it, largemouth like it, carp like it if you're in the right place. I actually had a carp fish about £20 on it and on one of these on uh, Monday this week. Chased it, chased it down and ate it, it was, it was quite a good eat. So there you go, the hairy fodder. Originally a bass fly but works for carp. Hope you like it, hope it was useful for you. Uh, if you enjoyed the video don't forget to share it and give me a thumbs up below, subscribe to the channel for more HD fly tying videos, thanks very much guys, bye!